This is the Imitation of Christ, chapter, uh, book one, chapter four. On being prudent in what we accept and do, it is not good to be taken in by every word or impulse that comes our way, but consider the thing prudently and thoughtfully in order not to offend God. Because we are frail, we are always ready to believe the worst of people. They who seek perfection realize that human nature is weak and prone to spread the evil word. It is wise, therefore, to act slowly, not to trust entirely our own opinions, or to accept every tale and quickly pass it along to the next one. Seek advice from a wise person of good conscience, and be instructed by that person rather than follow your own way. A good life will make you wise in the ways of God and will broaden your experience. If you are humble and submissive to God's will, you will have peace in all that you do. Chapter 5 On the Reading of Holy Scripture It is truth that must be sought in Holy Scripture, not necessarily beauty of expression. It should be read with the same spirit in which it was written. We must seek the good of our soul rather than literary style, and just as gladly read simple and devout books as those of deep and subtle learning. Be concerned only with the pure truth in what you read, and not with the greatness or lack of learning of the author. Think more of what is said than of the one who said it. Humans soon pass away. God's truth remains forever. Through the scripture, God speaks to us in many ways, regardless of them he uses as instruments. Too often we are led by curiosity to read Holy Scripture and want to understand and argue passages that we should simply pass over. If you wish to profit by the reading of Scripture, then do so with humility, simplicity and faith and never try to acquire a reputation for being a scholar. Inquire and then listen meekly to what the saints tell you. Do not be critical of the sayings of the ancient fathers, for they were not written without reason. Right, chapter 6, Concerning Inordinate Affections When people desire anything to an excessive degree, they immediately lose their peace of soul. The proud and avaricious are always perturbed, while the humble and the poor in spirit live in peace and contentment. Those who are not mortified are easily overcome by small temptations. It is difficult for people to withdraw themselves from worldly desires when their spirits are still weak and inclined to the things of sense. While in this state their hearts are heavy when they try to detach themselves and they are quickly angered by those who oppose them. If they give in to themselves, then they suffer remorse of conscience, because they have yielded to temptation and do not find the peace of mind that they desired. We find our peace only by resisting our passions, not by giving in to them. Peace is in the heart of the devout and fervent, not in them who are carnal and give themselves to outward things. Okay, here we stop for the day.